Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Lewis Hertham about the peripheral, which is premiering October 21st on Prime Video. Thank you so much for your time. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me, Petey. It's pretty cool. I mean, you know, a lot of people, you have an amazing body of work, so I'm excited to chat with you. Um, Thank you. I feel like it's like a yes and no, maybe answer to this question where, you know, <laughs> you work on the peripheral and it's like, do you know what to expect? Because it's like, you've worked on projects with people that like past projects like Westworld creators and everything. But I feel like no one could really like expect what's coming with this show, right? <laughs> well, if you've read the book, you might have an idea, but uh, if you have In terms haven't, of working on it, though, is what I Oh, in, ter <laughs> in terms of working on it, you definitely know what to expect. Okay. You expect grandeur and brilliance. I mean, to be quite honest, you know, it's... Uh, they uh, they exceed expectations all the time. So, yeah, I mean... And I think for the people that know Jonah and Lisa's work, regardless of how far back you go, uh, you know, they kind of know what to expect, something that's going to kind of blow your mind. Well, there was something, I mean, I'm talking more, I've watched some of the episodes already, and it's just some some yeah. things kind of happen in this in the show that, you know, you think you got to figure it out and everything. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I can't even imagine just working on shows like this. Like, with, with like what are the conversations like? Even going back to the West, like, what with the creators, yeah. what are those well, conversations were, like? <laughs> there were no There were no conversations with Westworld. Yeah, <laughs> uh, very. I mean, a little bit, obviously, in the beginning when you got the job and so forth. But uh, you you weren't. And for me, as as playing Peter, I really needed to know what Peter knew. Mm -hmm. I really didn't need to know any more than that. That just uh, dictated what I was going to do in the show. Yeah. But as far as a show like this, um, I I read, I think, all of the scripts before starting. OK, so uh, I knew pretty much what to expect, but still, to be quite honest with you, even kind of seeing it on the page and then get, <laughs> getting there and everything, it's still it's it's vastly different. You it's know, amazing. Because, yeah. You've seen what the first three or so, uh, first or three. Six? Yeah, I've seen the first yeah. three. Um, right, right. And, you know, it's one of those things, too, where book adaptations interest me because, you mm. know, Depending on the project, they will, you know, do what we know from the book and we kind of see it on screen. And then there's situations where there's variations of that, where some things are right. similar and some are aren't. I guess it depends on the project. And this is not the first kind of adapted from a book project you've worked on. What right. is your mindset with like source material, with like book adaptation? Does, does it depend on the project? Uh, well, first of all, when Lisa and Jonah call you, you say yes well, uh, I, I, that goes without no, saying no, absolutely goes without saying so but then you hear it's a william gibson book and you go wow okay and then you you get the book and you read that thing is deep man yep. you know it's deep and so the adaptation for anybody that's read the book or some people may have attempted to read the book yep. and 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 not finished it because it, it it it's a task um i think that and i mean that in a good way because it's you know obviously but um the adaptation is it's not as it's it's more a little more easy to follow if you will and i yep. think you can see that <laughs> and it's laid out quite quite well but it is literally full of surprises as we go on and uh and there are certainly some things that happen in the show that that don't necessarily happen in the book which is true for my character in fact Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's, I've been, like, it's funny because... Am I still doing, not answering your question? Peter? You're answering them great. No, okay. it's just, it's okay. tough because I don't, I think this is a really good one to go in fresh, like, from a TV show perspective. Absolutely. So I, I like, agree. So, like, I'm trying to ask questions that aren't like, tell me about your character. I like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Thank you. So it's Thank like you. that. No, that's why. No, that's why they're they're kind of they're coming up like they're more like bigger questions because I'm trying right. to like, because like I I feel like that is the secret to enjoying 
content. I listen, you know, they usually they, you know, most people say, oh, the book was better than the yeah. movie or this or that or the other. You're right about this. This yes. is definitely one of those. And and not to say that it's better or worse or anything like that, because William Gibson, I think, is very happy with it. Uh, it really is one of those projects where it's just just sit down, get your popcorn, get your whatever and enjoy it and just let it take you away because it does in every episode goes deeper and deeper and you know you've seen the first three but you know there are five more and you really we go deep and it's interesting too because i have a rule if i do get a trailer for something i'll watch it yeah. once like i don't keep going and everything but it's fun sometimes because you're pressed you get them in advance like it's fun that's right not knowing anything about it and just going yeah. in to be honest with you <laughs> no it, it's so true uh and you know, there's a lot. There's a lot to think about when you watch yeah. that trailer, especially the new one. Um, and we had the premiere a couple of nights ago mm -hmm. in downtown LA. And uh, even because I haven't seen them all, and uh, they after the premiere they did a compilation sort of of uh, uh, compilation <laughs> of of what's to come. And seeing some of the things that I remember from reading the scripts, I was like, wow. So, yeah, trust me when I tell you that it, it's uh, it will, you know, grab you and not let go. And by the time I think you get to the third end of the third episode, you really, at least for me, I was like, oh, I can't wait to see more. And of course, you become even though I'm in it, I become a fan of it the way I did with Westworld. Absolutely. I became well, such a fan of that show. Well, you know, one of the biggest kind of like trends or big things in content right now, and it kind of gets brought up a lot on my show, Lewis, is genre bending is like a huge thing right now, right? Yeah. And I feel like it's pretty cool because if you yeah. think of like on the top of your head, first genre bending show that comes to mind, it is Westworld. Like it yeah. is, it is, that is like the <laughs> definition yeah. of a genre bending. I That's pretty cool to say that you've worked on like the genre bending show. Oh, I think I... <laughs> I'll be a little biased here. I think that the first se I, I think that the first season, the first season of Westworld is the best season of television ever um, for many different reasons. Now, there are a lot of great competitors there that I could name off, but I won't. Uh, but I just think I because of the, f the freshness of it and the uh, it was so unique. It was like something you literally never seen before. If you think Unless about it. Unless you were old enough, as I am, <laughs> to remember the, the original movie. But even that, because I was like, uh, let me see, six, 73. I was in my teens. And, yeah. you know, and, and it, it, it kind of like it sort of blew my mind. It, mm -hmm. it was so uh, so, seemed so futuristic and, and so, um, God, just like it just had my mind reeling. Could, is that really possible? And then did it feel before it's time to? Like when you that, watch that's it? Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what I was looking yeah. for. Thank you. It, it <laughs> definitely felt before it's time, way ahead of its time, which it was. And of course, the brilliant Michael Crichton, uh, he he was very much ahead of his time. But sort of Joan and Alicia are kind of ahead of their time, too, and everything that they do. A lot of what they do ends up being sort of a cautionary tale, too, you know? Uh, yeah. Because they are, I think they are very uh, forward thinking. But it's it's one of those things, too, where, you know, this one is more kind of like the peripheral. It's more sci-fi. It's more kind yeah. of in one sphere. Although, no, there's some moments where it kind of can kind of dive into, like, the genre bending components. But it's more kind of evident that you're watching a sci-fi sci science fiction show. But, like, with yes. Westworld, it's like, am I watching a Western? Am I watching, like, am I watching a sci-fi? Sometimes, like, mm -hmm. am I watching, like, a thriller, like, a horror art? Yeah. Like, what am I watching? You know what I yeah. mean? <laughs> well, this one, this one, too, because this yeah. one has a lot of thriller-type, uh, you know, elements as well. I mean... I mean, the uh, concept of it is is a thriller too if you think about it absolutely i mean it's a it's a mystery it's a thriller it's a sci-fi it's a it's a lot of it's a look lot into of the future it's a lot of it stuff. makes you think it makes you think of a lot of things is that a project that grabs your attention a a, a project that asks, asks a lot of questions lewis uh well yeah i mean yeah. To be honest with you, and to not again, I have I try to be diplomatic. Sometimes you get stuff that's pretty saccharine and just sort of the same old thing and everything. Mm -hmm. So when you get a chance to work on something like this, yep. 
and something like Westworld uh, for an actor, especially one that's been around 40 years doing this as I have, it's mm -hmm. like just, I mean, it's manna from heaven to be able to sink your teeth into something like this. And then of course, playing a character, unlike anything I've ever played before at this point in my career, that is always a blessing and, you know, a joy. It's interesting you mention that because you have worked on a lot of different projects. And the question I was going to ask you was, mm -hmm. is the best part of being a storyteller diving into all these different worlds? And the answer mm -hmm. that you're going to give me is yes. So I don't want yeah. to. <laughs> yes. So, well, yes, it is. So well, It's part of the whole thing. <laughs> but my point is it's cool because, one, you're in all these different shows and movies that are different genres and different stories. But then, mm. two, you're playing different characters in a lot of them. So it's like you're diving in in two different ways, right? Like the genre and the like the personality and the, the character, which is really cool. You're absolutely right. I, because really, I hadn't done a lot of sci-fi, per yep. se, uh, until Westworld, because it's certainly sci-fi, yep. uh, certainly to a degree. <laughs> I don't think as much as this show, The Peripheral. Yeah. But um, what is know, Westworld? I, Sorry, <laughs> man. Look, I tell you what. If I if <laughs> I if I pod. figure if I figure it out, I'll uh, I'll let you know. Uh, <laughs> because we uh, you know we kind of just go with the flow. We go did. with it. I mean, but I'm, yeah, this was one of your first sci fi's though. You were saying. Yeah, that was really my first real sci fi uh, that I can recall. Although I did like an episode of uh, also on Amazon Prime of. Uh, Electric Dreams, yep. you know, Philip K. Dick. So that that was certainly sci-fi. But I mean, on a larger scale, something that you work on uh, time and time again over mm -hmm. a long period of time. Got Did quite a bit of, got to, ended up being the father to several uh, possessed young girls somehow. I've done that a few times. So I was, you know, got into doing some of the horror, uh, horror genre, but... Um, yeah, I mean, this is like, uh, again, manna, manna from heaven to sink your teeth into you've, something Yeah, like you've this. worked on, I saw, like, yeah, there's a few, pro yeah, you've, it's amazing. Like, seriously, you've, you've worked on some amazing things, and it's, it's, it's really fortunate. awesome to see. You, you, you were in Hacks, too. Yeah. Yeah. I, did, I was. <laughs> was I was. It was one of those projects where I was like, can you imagine if like, you were in Hacks? You're like, no, I wasn't. <laughs> Wait, what? What'd you say? I was in Hacks. <laughs> no, yeah, it's no, cool. I, and I think no, that's I a show too, because that's like comedy, but like very dark in terms of like yeah. what's going on with the characters. Like, you know what I mean? Genre bending. Oh, Lewis I, I have to genre say, bender. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I have, to, I have to say this, and I say it with love. Uh, when I got the show, I, I was excited because I was like, oh, well, I'm playing the lead character's father. That sounds like, you know, might be around a while. Little did I know. Well, I guess I shouldn't give any spoilers, huh? <laughs> but um, you know his, his fate. But uh, that was that was a joy just to be a part of something that is so. I mean, Gene Smart and Hannah, they're both just brilliant. I, yeah. I love that show. I really no, did. I can't. Was, they're shooting season three right now. They're, they're, yeah, there's there's so much amazing content out there. Um, and no, yeah. it's amazing. Almost too much. It's hard. I don't, to I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. Well, it's part of the yeah. It comes with the <laughs> I know, territory. It's part right? of the job, right? That's right. <laughs> Lewis, thank you so much for coming on Pop Turn. It was so great chatting with you. My pleasure. Um, peripheral. Yeah, absolutely. We finally did this. Absolutely. There's, yeah. <laughs> there's a long uh, um, back and forth of trying to make this happen. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? You play the waiting game, and it just it happens. You know what I mean? So so here we are, like that. <laughs> I think you 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 probably have to wait too. Sometimes I have friends that are actors too. You play the waiting game for auditions and parts all the time. That's the gig, right? That's all we do is wait. I think it was Spencer Tracy that says I act for free. They pay me to wait. Well, I think was it Tra Spencer Tracy who said that? Somebody is it, is it a mis actors. I think it's a misconception, right? That like the job is auditioning, right? Like your job is like it's mm, it, auditioning yeah. is a big part of it, and then yeah. when you get the role, it's like. Okay, we're ready to go, and it feels right. like more fun, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's. I, I'm, I wouldn't say you were wrong, but I will <laughs> say that as far as the waiting, it's like people don't realize how long the days are, and that the, it is filled with waiting, waiting, and then you get on camera for a very short period of time, mm -hmm. you know, in comparison. Yeah. But again, just like you, it's part of the game, 
and it's, you it's, know it's and, all it's all fun it's all fun uh peripheral premiering on prime video october 21st you have social media right instagram and twitter i believe yes sir lewis un, at lewis underscore hertham amazing well so somebody's so- got my name lewis hertham <laughs> on twitter and on instagram and they won't give it back they <laughs> They won't let me have it. Just at Lewis Hertham, and yeah, uh, so at Lewis underscore Hertham. Oh and come on, Elon, buy Twitter so I can get my name back. <laughs> this has been Pop Turd of YouTube.com slash Pop Turd for previous episodes. Until next time, this is Lewis Hertham, who you can catch in the peripheral, premiering October twenty first on Prime Video and PD Beats. Signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.